Please, Mum, don't let anything upset you because there is everything to look forward to. But you know I couldn't do a terrible thing like that. Though I am a bit of a crook, I wouldn't hurt a mouse. The Bedfordshire magistrates, fearing local prejudice, committed Hanratty for trial in London at the Old Bailey. But the Crown had its way. The case was returned to Bedford. Hanratty pleaded not guilty on all three counts. Press and public scrambled for seats when the trial opened on January the 22nd, 1962. It was the most celebrated murder trial of its time. The judge at Bedford Special Assize was Mr. Justice Gorman. Counsel for the Crown were Graham Swanick, QC, and his junior, Geoffrey Lane, who would become Lord Chief Justice. Their case against Hanratty was based on evidence of identification, evidence that would supposedly point to him as the killer in the Morris Minor. Before being abandoned in East London, the murder car had been seen by several witnesses. John Skillet had a near collision with the Morris Minor. He identified Han Ratty as the driver. But his passenger, Edward Blackhall, better positioned, insisted it was not Han Ratty. James Trower, a pedestrian, also identified Han Ratty, despite having only a glimpse of the passing car and its driver. But the most dramatic testimony came from Valerie Storey, who was brought to court on a stretcher. She recalled the attacker saying, call me Jim, and she identified Han Ratty to the jury. Han Ratty's barrister, Michael Sherrard, cross-examined her and found her testimony unshakable. Valerie Storey, the crucial witness, although she had only a fleeting glimpse of the face of the assailant in the headlights of an oncoming car, was nevertheless prepared to pledge her oath that she had identified Hanratty correctly. Of course Hanratty's the man. I was there, I saw him. Uh, there's no possible doubt whatsoever Hanratty was guilty beyond any doubt whatsoever. Story had no doubt whatsoever, while acknowledging that on the crucial parade, Hanratty had stood out like a carrot in a bunch of bananas. But at another parade, she had picked out a wholly innocent RAF corporal and identified him as the A6 killer. Hanratty wasn't on that parade. I couldn't identify him. Um, I just tried to pick out somebody, I suppose, who I thought looked like him. I made a mistake. The man had nothing to do with the, with the case. It's just one of those things. This year, numerous police papers relating to the case have been disclosed for the first time. Among them, the long hospital interview with Valerie Storey. It reveals that a full month before identifying Hanratty, she told ACOT, I may not be able to pick him out. My memory of this man's face is fading. The jury never knew of these doubts. Then came a vital respect in which Hanratty did not resemble the wanted man. Valerie's story had made it clear that the murderer knew little about cars or driving. In her original statement, she said, he wanted me to start the car for him. He didn't know where the gears were. The car cut out, so I started it up again. But Han Ratty knew all about cars. Jimmy was a good driver. Well, I won't say excellent driver, but he was a very good driver. Actually, in the 50s, he taught me to drive. 